temperament. It's the way that we go about business. It's the way that we speak. It's, you know, we, we use a lot of hands and we are kind of, there is something very, very warm. And you see that in the hospitality that we get here. And, and fortunately, I'm glad to say that we had the pleasure of, uh, of hosting CGM, uh, Monsieur le Président, le, and his team in, uh, in, uh, in Tel Aviv just a few weeks ago. So. There is something very, very natural about what's going on. La glace était brisée. Alors, it, it, it's, it was very, very simple. We met for dinner, and that was it. There was a relationship. And this is something that is truly, truly incroyable. I mean, it came in so natural. And the thing is that we had 80 Moroccan businessmen coming to Israel, going to Tel Aviv, uh, uh, visiting person, personal visits to Jerusalem, of course. But the idea was that they were able to sit together and determine and see, see for the future, how they're going to do business together. Now that, you know, as a chairperson of the Export Institute, I can tell you very closely, there's no question of, of, of what we can do together. It's just a question of how much we will be able to push it forward. There is so much technological support that Israel can give Morocco, but there is so much Morocco can give to Israel. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea of reciprocal relationship. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity. One of the things that we see nowadays, due to the fact that, you know, everything the geopolitically going on in Europe, is that you see a shift of blocks, of economic blocks. The world is going through a change that we didn't see coming. Because on the one hand, we have the Abraham Accords from a year and a half ago, and all of a sudden we have this devastating war going on in Europe. Who would have imagined a war going on in Europe? Yet, you know, I mean, put the humanitarian issue aside, which Israel deals with daily, and we're, we're glad to do it. We're glad to be a part of the world effort to support the Ukraine. But, when you look at it, there is a huge change, economic change coming forward. And one of the things, you know, for instance, you know, that a lot of the companies are facing here now is the shortage of grains, which is, you know, nobody understands the shortage of grains until you have to face it. There's no, you know, potentially no bread, no food for the animals. There is so much resulting out of it. Water, irrigation, climate tech, desert tech. These are things, you know, we always think a lot of, you know, a lot of the times when people think about Israel, so they think of HLS, you know, cyber and stuff like that. No, Israel is truly a hub for innovation. And I know that we can do so much things with uh, uh, Moroccan companies. You know, just this morning I visited uh, Grand Thornton, Morocco, and I saw the potential is endless because in many ways you are in Africa, but you have the thought of a Western, of a developed country. And, you know, I, I, I would call you a developed country. I, I know that it's still, you know, that you, you're on the verge, mm. but you are a developed in the way you think, in the way you see business, you understand the meaning of cooperation. And I think that's one of the strong suits about Israel also. And the other thing that you should understand, following the shift in economic blocks that we're going to see, I think, due to the war in Europe, is the fact that the Mediterranean, we are like anchors. On the one side, you have Israel and Turkey and Greece, etc., and Egypt. And on the other side of the Mediterranean, even though today we're in Casablanca and we're on the Atlantic, not on the Mediterranean, but still on this other side of the Mediterranean, there's Morocco. And these are like two anchors. And we have not yet done anything really, really major in order to push that economically forward. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good place to start. We are we're business people, so we need, you know, we need concrete things. It's, it's very obvious. We need output, you know, we need outcome. But, you know, relationship building, trust building, that takes a little bit of time. But I also already see Israeli companies here. And I see, you know, the Air Maroc, Royal Air Maroc flies to Israel now on a daily basis. Isn't that, ama isn't that amazing? Did you imagine that like a few months ago? So, so this, these, are thing, these things are happening and we're pushing them forward. And I truly think that we're going to see the fruits in the coming year. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably one of the most challenging and interesting things that we can do together. Morocco, no question, is not just Morocco. You know, we're coming here, and you know, we see Morocco. And last time, when the, when the CGM were in Israel, we also met Monsieur Abdeljoub, who's also a part of the uh, presidency of uh, of uh, Monsieur Shakib Halj, and. He, he really, they know how to open doors to Africa. Now we work in Africa, even my company works in Africa, but it's not the same. That's the thing you understand and, and you know, Africa is huge. When speaking about Africa, that's, that's very ignorant on my side because each country is very, very different in the potential and what they can do. And that, that. So there's so much things that we can do and rely on Moroccan capabilities in order to really do business in Africa. And that's the amazing thing.